Hey, Emily. Surprise, surprise. Looks like I'm going to be fashionably late once again. But hey, I know you'll forgive me, right? After all, you should be grateful to have someone like me in your life. Oh, by the way, when exactly was I supposed to meet you? Was it 11? Well, I hope not, because it's going to be at least another hour before I even bother leaving my cozy little palace. So yeah, don't hold your breath, sweetheart. Wow. Seriously? That's the first thing you decide to say to me? Don't you think there's something a bit more important you should be dealing with in a situation like this? Hmm. Nah, sorry. I got nothing. What? Remember we were supposed to meet at 11 a.m.? I've been sitting here like a patient saint for over 30 minutes waiting for you. You weren't even bothering to reply to any of my messages. I was genuinely getting worried about you. So what? What do you mean, so what? Shouldn't you at least apologize to me? What for? Excuse me? We had plans to indulge in some delicious cakes and catch a movie together. Don't you think you should apologize to me for making me come all this way to the cake shop? Just to wait around like some lost puppy? Not really, no. So, let me get this straight. You make your fiancé wait over 30 minutes, only to drop the bomb that you'll be at least another hour before leaving the house, and you don't even feel the tiniest bit of remorse about it? That just shows me that you couldn't care less about me or how I feel. So tell me, what am I to you, huh? Oh, I'm just running a little late. No need to make a fuss. Quit acting like I'm deliberately trying to mess with you or whatever. Honestly, you've got some kind of persecution complex going on there. Maybe you should get that checked out. No, I don't. Any normal person would be ticked off if they had to wait nearly two hours for someone. If you can't grasp how I'm feeling at this moment, it's pretty clear you couldn't care less about me, right? Hey, don't you dare compare me to some normal person. Our relationship is way more complex, which means you have no right to whine when I pull stunts like this. How many times do I have to drill it into your head? Stop getting all worked up over every little mistake I make. It's your duty to forgive me. Got it? Don't you dare forget that. Again with this. I agreed to marry you, didn't I? But I'm not going to do it if your attitude stays like this. Remember how I graciously agreed to meet your mind-numbingly dull family before we get married? I'll be stuck at your parents' place, dying of boredom for a whole day, just counting down the minutes until I can escape. So you're going to wait a couple of hours for me, okay? It's absolutely nothing compared to the torture you're about to subject me to in a couple of weeks. So save your complaints, all right? What I'm going to put you through? For meeting my family? That's so rude. It's not rude, considering who they are. Your dad's just some construction worker. It's not like he's some big shot or anything important. <laughs> your family should feel privileged that I even bother agreeing to meet them. I don't normally waste my precious time visiting families with low incomes, you know? Waste your time? Low income? I can't believe how insensitive you're being right now. You're talking about my own family. And you haven't even met them yet. I had no idea you had this side to you. This isn't some run-of-the-mill relationship. You should have figured that out by now. So don't you dare compare me to anyone else in your pathetic circle. Because you don't owe any of those losers as much as you owe me. Anyway... I'll grace you with my presence in about an hour or so. Is my son running late for another date with you? Yeah. I was just chatting with him, and he mentioned it to me as if it's no big deal. I'm sorry, but I feel like I must have raised a selfish boy. I swear, I did my best. Now I know it's not really my place to say, but lately, I've been wondering if you'd truly be happy with him. The way he's treating you, it's just not right. I mean, I know he's not the most sensitive person in the world, but I expected him to at least show more respect to his fiance. I hope he's not causing you any unnecessary stress or anything like that. To tell you the truth, even I've been wondering if agreeing to marry him was a good idea or not. I'm sure you're not sure about it. 
Why did you say yes? Why him? I hear the way he treats you. I said yes to Johnny because I owe him. What do you mean? Well, it's kind of a long story. Back in high school, I wasn't exactly Miss Popular. The popular girls made it their mission to bully me. And things got really rough. One evening, I was minding my own business, heading to a bookstore alone, when a bunch of senior guys, the really mean ones, spotted me and surrounded me. I'm pretty sure they were high or drunk or something. They started demanding money from me just to let me pass. And if I didn't cuff up the cash, they threatened to take it from me in some other way. These guys were seriously messed up. Like getting suspended for drugs and assaulting teachers kind of messed up. And me? Well, I was just a girl. I couldn't even defend myself against the mean girls at school who bullied me. Let alone these guys. That night, they could have done anything to me. I tried fighting back to escape, but it only made them angrier. And they started hitting me. Oh my god. Johnny happened to be on his way home from a basketball game that night and witnessed the whole thing. He had his baseball bat with him and approached them from behind. Everything went down in a blur. I don't think any of those guys had any clue about what hit them or who was responsible. Johnny came to my rescue that night. I really think those guys were planning on taking more than just my money that night. I had no idea that happened. Johnny never told me. Like I said, those guys had no idea what hit them. Rumors spread around school that they got seriously messed up, but nobody knew the full story. Little did anyone know that Johnny was the one behind it all. It's like everyone thought I had some secret ninja skills or something because nobody dared to mess with me at school after that incident. Johnny didn't just save me that night. He completely transformed my school life. No more teasing or bullying. If Johnny hadn't been there, things could have turned out way worse. I owe Johnny big time. Maybe even my life. I see. Johnny was a pretty wild kid himself. It doesn't surprise me that he jumped into a fight. Coming up behind some guys when he had a bat. Well, if he did it to save someone, I can't really complain. Back in the day, I didn't even know Johnny. He's a few years older than me and didn't go to my high school. After that crazy night, I was too shaken up to say much to him. And we never crossed paths again. Well, not until years later, after I finished college. One of my buddies dragged me to a club, and there he was, Johnny. I recognized him right away. He was the guy who saved me back in high school. Funny thing is, he didn't remember me. I guess I've changed a lot since the last time he saw me. But you know what? When he came to my rescue that night years ago, and now seeing him again, I couldn't help but think it was fate. That's why I wanted to be with him. I had no idea about any of this. And I had no idea you felt that way about my son. But lately, I've been having doubts about being with Johnny. There are times when I feel like he's using me or not reciprocating my feelings. Whenever he does something that ticks me off, if I dare speak up, he throws that night in my face. It's like he expects me to forgive every single thing he does just because of what he did for me that one time. I'm really sorry, Emily. I had no idea that my son helped you like that back then. And I had no clue he was using it against you all this time in your relationship. You see, I had a tough life. And I didn't want my son to experience the same hardships. So I've been lenient with him and given him everything he wanted. I never realized it would turn him into someone who uses a single good deed as an excuse to get away with all the bad things he does to others. Yeah. He doesn't seem to care about your feelings at all. He's using what he did years ago as an excuse to treat you like garbage and get away with it. He only cares about himself. God, he's just like I was when I was his age. I should have seen this earlier. I guess I was hoping he'd change like I did. You used to be like that? What made you change? I messed up really bad at work, but the owner of one of my client's firms helped me. What do you mean you messed up? I did something really stupid, and nobody was ready to cover for me. I thought my life was done for, but you won't believe what went down. The client I tried to pull a fast one on, the boss of his company, reached out to me. He said he'd forget the whole mess if I promised to never pull a stunt like that again. 
All he wanted was for me to stick to the right path from then on. So I made a deal. That's all it took? Isn't it weird how things work out? I could have easily lied to that guy, saying I'd change without actually doing a thing. Most folks would laugh it off, feeling lucky they dodge a bullet and continue being their old selves. But something shifted in me. I couldn't figure out why he helped me without gaining anything in return. See, I used to think successful business people had to be ruthless. No exceptions. But this dude showed me that you can be kind and still make it big. So I decided to give it a shot. I started building more business connections, making friends along the way. Before long, I had my own company up and running. And it's doing well. It may not be as massive as his, but it's big enough that I can provide Johnny with everything he desires. And money isn't an issue for me. So that's how you got your company off the ground? It was the experience that changed me. I was kind of hoping that it would be Johnny's marriage that changed him. Maybe when he gets to meet your family and realizes how nice they are. I don't know. I just hope he starts being nicer to you. You deserve it. And he shouldn't be treating you like this. I'll tell you what. Give Johnny another chance. See how it goes when he meets your family. And I'll give him one more chance to change too. It pains me to see how insensitive he's being to you. If he messes up again, I don't think I'll be able to forgive him. And don't think for a second that you have to either, okay? Okay. Maybe when he meets my family and sees where I come from, something will click in him. I'll give him another chance to turn things around. I still believe it was fate that brought us together. Thanks, Mr. Brandon. I'll let you know how it goes. Where are you? We should have been there by now. What the heck are you doing? Give me a break. I just woke up. You what? I went out drinking with some friends last night and I got home really late. I had the worst hangover this morning and I was hoping I could sleep it off. I went back to bed and, well, let's just say your annoying texts woke me up again. I can't believe you. You knew we were going to meet my family today. Why did you go out drinking last night? That was today? I totally forgot. <laughs> for some reason, I was thinking that was next week. We were supposed to be there for one o'clock lunch. Whatever, we can still go today. Just give me a couple of hours to get ready. I'll swing by and pick you up. Tell your parents we'll be there for dinner instead. I won't be doing that. And by the way, your dad wants to talk to you. Huh? I already called my parents and said we weren't coming. Then I called your dad. He couldn't believe you did it to me again. What are you talking about? You called my dad? <laughs> Just stop. I'm too hungover for any of your jokes. I'm not joking. Are you saying that we're going to my dad's house instead? My head is still pounding. I'm too hungover for this right now. Look. I don't know what you've been talking about, but whatever. Whoever's house we're supposed to be going to today, just give me a couple of hours. And tell whoever it is that we'll be there for dinner instead of lunch. And if you promise not to bug me about this on the way to wherever we're going today, I'll give you a thousand dollars. How does that sound? Like I said, I'm too hungover. I didn't want to deal with your nagging today. What? If I give you a bunch of money, you'll shut up, right? If we're going to your parents' house today, give it to them so they'll shut up about me being late. <laughs> They're poor. They need it. And I'm in no shape to hear anyone complaining today. It's a win-win. How dare you? You think you can just pay me and my family off now? If you haven't even met them yet. And you think if you flash your money around, all will be forgiven? Yeah, I do. Poor people need money, and they'll do anything for it. It's not like I'm making them work for it either. I just want them to shut up. <laughs> they don't want your money, and they certainly don't need it. And neither do I. Yeah, right. Johnny, you're not my son anymore and I'm writing you out of my will. Huh? I said from today forward, you're not my son anymore. You're nothing to me. Dad, 
What's going on? Are you drunk or something? Did I do something? If I did, I'll just apologize. So don't get so bent out of shape. <laughs> Have you heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? What? Not only did you insult Emily's family by not going there today, you insulted her and her family by trying to pay them to shut up. I didn't raise my son to act like that. I'll never forgive you for how you've been treating Emily and now her family too. You're a disgrace to my family name. What are you talking about? You're supposed to be marrying their daughter, yet you don't have the decency to even go meet them. I thought I raised you better than this. Oh, who cares? Her parents are low-class citizens. Her dad's a blue-collar worker. They don't have any money. They should be coming here to see me, not me wasting my time going there. Then again, they'd probably steal something if they did come here. <laughs> Why do you think I haven't let Emily move in with me yet? Because I haven't equipped the place with cameras yet. I didn't want her letting her parents in when I'm not home and everyone robbing me blind. <laughs> You're horrible. You haven't even met them. If you hate them so much, why are you marrying Emily in the first place? Because she's beautiful and does whatever I say. Plus, she owes me. So I can do whatever I want and she can't complain about it. That's what you think a wife should be? You're further gone than I ever thought before. I was stupid for thinking you would ever change. Exactly. I haven't changed. So why are you so upset with me now? Because you've never been engaged in committing to spend the rest of your life with someone before. Hey, what the heck did you do to my dad? How dare you bring him into this? He has nothing to do with you and I, and nothing to do with me and your family. I thought you were supposed to be a good girl and do what I say. But this is what you do to me? Is that what you expected from me? I gave you everything. I spoiled you. I showered you with gifts. And in return, you were supposed to do whatever I said. And then you run off and tell my dad the instant I do something you don't like. Where's your appreciation for what I did for you back when you were in high school? So that's it, huh? That's what I mean to you? I finally understand. What are you talking about? Don't answer that. I don't even care. We're through. I'm not marrying you. You can forget about it. You were supposed to be the perfect wife who would do whatever I said. But I see that's not going to be the case. So just forget about it. Just as I thought. You never cared about me. You wanted a slave, not a wife. Oh, shut up. You were only after my money anyway. But too bad, you're not getting it. Ha ha ha. You could have had it all, or at least half. But now, you're not getting nothing. Not even a cent. Yeah, whatever. So it's all about your money, huh? Or should I say, your dad's money? Let's face it. He's the real boss of that company, not you. You're just lucky he's giving you a job there. I mean, seriously, who else would want to hire someone as clueless and lazy as you? And by the way, where did you get the idea that my family is poor? What made you think that? Let me set the record straight. My grandpa is the proud owner of Solid Build Construction. His company is responsible for crafting some of the most jaw-dropping buildings in the whole darn country. What? Solid build construction? That company is 10 times the size of my dad's. That company is huge. You, your grandpa, is the owner of that entire enterprise? But you said your family did construction. I thought your dad ran a crane or something. I didn't say he was a construction worker. I said he worked in construction. He works in the head office for my grandpa's construction company. If you ever would have met my dad, you would have seen that he's a small guy. He's never done construction in his life. He doesn't swing a sledgehammer. He pushes pencils. <laughs> and you definitely wouldn't have thought he was poor if you saw his mansion and collection of cars. My dad's the company president now that my grandpa's retired. What? You can't be serious. 
My dad was really looking forward to meeting you. He was hoping when we got married that you'd come work for him at the head office. Then all this happened. It's impossible now. We're not getting married anymore. You said so yourself. Just hang on a second there. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I never said we weren't getting married. I mean, I didn't say anything like that to your dad at least. But I did. I told him what you said to me. My dad doesn't want anyone marrying me just for his company and money. He thought it was cute how you had no idea who he was and you were still interested in me. But like you said, the marriage is off, isn't it? I understand. Wait, 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 wait. I apologize for saying those terrible things about your family. I had no idea who they were. I apologize from the bottom of my heart. I'd loved you ever since we first met. But you were in high school then, and I knew it wouldn't work out at the time. But then you found me again. It's true love. I love you so much, I want to marry you. Let's call off the calling off of the marriage. You just don't get it, do you? Huh? You don't understand anything. The only thing I ever wanted to hear from you occasionally was, sorry, and you've never once said it to me. Despite all the things you've done to me, you've never said it to me because you don't think you've ever done anything wrong to me, isn't it? I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. How's that? Is that enough for you? It's not just the word itself. You have to mean it. The word has meaning and it comes with a feeling that I know you just don't have. Emily. I wanted to be with you. I really did. I thought we were meant to be together. I thought it was fate that brought you to me that night. But Emily, it was fate. That's the only explanation. Let's get married. It's what destiny wants. That's what brought me to you the first time and you to me all those years later. No way, Johnny. You're wrong. And I've already cracked the case. Guess what? It was nothing but a big fat scam, wasn't it? Huh? A scam? What are you talking about? Come on. Don't play dumb. You and your buddies who tried to mess with me that night. You're all in cahoots, aren't you? You totally set me up. They acted all menacing, making it seem like something terrible was about to happen. And right on cue, you show up like a so-called hero, saving me from those supposed villains. Hold up. So you were already in on the whole thing? Yeah, I found out pretty recently. I happened to catch you hanging out with those sketchy dudes who were trying to mess with me that night. So, I decided to confront them and get the scoop on what really happened that night. Tell me, what was it all about? Why did you lie to me? Well, you see, it's a bit complicated, if you can even wrap your head around that. I was just messing around with those guys, placing a little bet to see if you were gullible enough to fall for me and be my girlfriend. But you had to go and run off before I could even explain myself. And I ended up shelling out a hundred bucks to those idiots because of your little disappearing act. Then, years later, we crossed past again. And miracle of miracles, you actually agreed to be my girlfriend, helping me win back that hundred bucks I lost. So yeah, you're like my lucky charm or something. Aren't I just the luckiest guy ever? You're despicable, Johnny. I don't want to see you ever again. Maybe if I change my mind, I'll give you a call. Give me about 10 or 20 years to think about it. And after that, if it's really fate, I'm sure I'll run into you again. But until that day, don't call me, don't text me, and don't come anywhere near me. And if that day never comes and we never see each other again, let's call that fate. Enjoy your life, goodbye. Emily, don't go. After that, Johnny's father not only disowned Johnny and wrote him out of his will, but he also fired him from the company. Now, with no job, no fiance, and no father to sponge off of, Johnny was left completely on his own. He didn't have any luck looking for a new job either, as all potential employers found it odd 
that he was fired from his own father's company and that he didn't have any good references. Johnny tried to go back to his father and apologize, but his father was firm with his decision and sent Johnny away every time. Mr. Brandon told Johnny that he would only take him back if he could prove to him that he had changed, but Johnny doesn't think that he did anything wrong and thus will likely never change. Things never would have needed to go that far if Johnny didn't have it in his head that he was better than everyone else. And because of that, he refused to apply for any blue collar positions. So he was out of work for a long time. He burned through what little money he'd saved up and had to eventually sell his house and move into a tiny apartment while he continued to look for a decent job. That alone was a massive hit to his ego, but it didn't seem to be enough to change him. Maybe when Johnny hits rock bottom, he'll realize his mistakes? Maybe.